Well, hello, friends. You can see the skies are blue. It is becoming vibrant out. The grass is starting to wake up. So it is spring, and this is really my first project day of spring for 2024. Um, we're about 20 days ahead for weather than we usually would be. Buds on shrubs and trees are about 20 days ahead. Temperature is about 20 days or more ahead. So we're sitting quite warm and I've started a few spring projects because sometimes while we want to wait until what seems normal, the weather doesn't cooperate. So I had some boxwood come in recently that I had ordered their larger bald and burlap ones and I need to get them planted. So I was going to talk a little bit about that, show a little bit of the cleanup and preparation. I have some hellebore cleanup to do, which I'm a little late on, but you do it when you can do it. And then um, we're gonna go do some horticultural oil or dormant oil on my fruit trees to prevent bad things this year. And we'll talk about that. So we're coming up on, you can see a lot of leaves. I have a pin oak, a big, beautiful pin oak that I love outside my kitchen window. And it drops its leaves all winter long. It holds onto them really late and then drops them into this flower bed. Some of them just recently have fallen down, so they weren't even really habitats. But our temperatures now are getting high enough that I can start pulling them out. And we do that because you wanna wait so the pollinators um, are able to stay in their habitat as long as possible. And what we're really working on is, you can see I pulled up my drip line. It's some boxwood here in this area. And I think this is a great time first to talk about winter burn versus traditional winter browning on boxwood. So there's two types of browning on boxwood. And this is actually a perfect example here. There's the bright yellow, and then there's more of some darker bronze colors that come. The tips here are winter burned, meaning they will not come out of this. And here in a couple weeks, I usually wait till the temperature is staying for sure above 50, if not 60. And then I can start pruning these back. The bronzing is very normal and it's gonna go away. It's gonna green back up here when the temperatures get right. It's more of a winter sustaining kind of mechanism for the boxwood. And so it's just some light bronzing. This bright yellow, like here where you can tell it's more of a dried off yellow color, that is winter burn and what will not come back. So if yours have a lot of this, they may be really damaged. This one, as you can see, it's only on the tips. So it's usually on new growth that happens in the fall that I didn't have a chance to harden off before the cold weather. And then I'm just gonna prune off here later on and it will be fine. It's really not a big deal. So what I'm working on here are these boxwood. And you can see right now they're wrapped up tightly because these were dug from the field where they were growing and they were wrapped in burlap. Now, when I plant things like this, and you've seen that I've planted large trees, all of the Techni Arborvitae along the road here that I planted a few years ago, they were all B and B just like this, bald and burlap. And they don't really take that much difference in planting except they are heavier, so they take a bigger hole. And to me, the big thing to watch is to make sure you plant them high enough because usually when they're dug up, they have a little bit of furrowed soil around the root flare. So you wanna make sure not to plant them too deep that soil has been furrowed up around them. So I'll kind of show that too. But I've started by preparing some of the holes, which this is that fountain I want to create this year. It's from an antique water trough for horses. But what I've done is made sure I pulled my drip line so I knew where it was. I also have a small wire for my landscape lighting that I'm watching that I knew where it was. So as long as you, know, you check for all those, depending if you're in a municipality and don't know where your underground wiring is, you may have to call for locates. So what's nice when I'm working with something like a small shrub, B&B &B can be pretty heavy, especially when you get into trees and I have to use maybe a skid loader or equipment to move it. A small boxwood shrub like this, it's heavier than a container that you'd get at a nursery, but it's still manageable for me to move in and out. And what I always like to do is since I can with a small size, is check the depth of the hole just by placing it in before I would unwrap it or anything. And right now this is perfect because it's sitting a few inches above grade. And that's really what I wanna watch here is making sure I have it high enough. So I'm gonna keep it wrapped tightly, like it was for shipping, not open it up until it's planted. So the reason I'm replanting some is, there were some issues with a couple I had here. I had moved them from somewhere else when I took an area out and they weren't doing well and I knew that and someday I would replace them. This is the day I'm replacing them. Now we'll show, whenever I have my hole dug, that's perfect. I can take maybe a little bit more loose soil out of that base. But the big thing now is how I wanna prepare that hole, which means I'm gonna use a lot of the same items I use year to year, but I think it's important to have a refresher on that. No matter what I plant, 
I use this in containers for annuals. I use this for any shrub or tree I plant. I always start with biotone. It's a great way to kind of start activating the roots in a very organic and non-abrasive way, if that makes sense. So instead of synthetic fertilizers, that can really damage things overall because synthetic fertilizers are often promoted to give quick initial growth. Biotone is a really great way to get those roots acclimated and activated into their area, but help them benefit from what's already there. So what I'm doing is just mixing that in, and then I do add a little bit of plant tone too. So boxwood are one of the evergreens that do not take acidic fertilizers. Instead, they like just more of a traditional, so I'm using plant tone. So I use this on arborvitae and on all of my boxwood, which usually I will top dress my boxwood beds with plant tone here in the spring. So any of these boxwood around here will benefit from that. But since I have a hole started, I can really begin to put it right in with the roots. So what I'm gonna do is slowly start taking away this burlap and then setting this down the hole. So I wanna come in close now. I just removed the burlap. Now, if it's natural burlap, a lot of people will tell you, you can still just plant it and it will naturally decay in the soil. When possible, I still like to remove it. So I take away all the burlap. There are often nails in it, so you wanna be really careful. I was putting those up in this basin here before just to make sure. Now, you can see this is above grade, meaning if I come down here, this is sitting higher than the natural soil around it. That's because all this soil up around, it's furrowed up and it's really covering up that root flare. So I like to go in just like I do to trees and make sure I remove some of that. But you can see here, one thing I like about bald and burlap, do you see how heavy of medium the soil is? On plants that are usually bald and burlap, it has a heavy soil it's grown in and it holds onto moisture really well. So in those first few years, it doesn't dry out near as quick as container growing items do. So that's why I really like to do this. Now we have plenty of moisture in the ground from some rains we've had. I'm not gonna water the hole like I usually would. I'll water it when I'm done, but now I'm just gonna place the soil around it. Don't worry, I was throwing the Frisbee for Kip, my French Bulldog, so he's entertained too. You can see I just opened up this boxwood. It has much better shape here when it's open. I did tamp the soil around it some, and then I will go through and water. It's one of those things where early in the spring you can do a lot of different projects like this. You just have to watch your weather and know your zone, but then adapt to what each year is doing too. It changes each year, so we never quite know. So these I do like to get in if I can. The earlier to me that I can get into the soil, when it's nice and ready to work in, it's gonna get a hopefully spring rains. That's what I'm hoping for. So if I can get these in here soon, any rains we get from now on, they're gonna benefit from going into the hot summer later on. So I have a couple more here I'm gonna do before I clean up a few hellebore. Now just to tell you, I give you the nitty gritty of me just outside working. I literally filmed this myself while I'm out here and I wanna give you a real depiction of what it's like. So I never wanna sugarcoat anything. You know, right now my beds are not top dressed with any type of mulch. We should talk about that. I still have some leaves on them. I have not done my full cleanup. There's no one else coming to work on these except me. So I do what I can and I have time. And then I get to the rest later because we have all spring, summer, fall to work on this. So don't ever feel pressure to get everything done at once. Now. I have it set pretty high as you can see. Another reason for that, other than just furrowed soil, plants over time, when you displace soil to dig a hole, they'll settle down. So you wanna always have them a little high because if they're too low, they can really start rotting with too much water sitting on the crown of them. So now that I have all that done, I have a few more I wanna do, but I thought we should go on to do some hellebores and then I'll get these watered. But the hellebores usually, it depends, it's late winter, early spring. Mine came up obviously pretty early, but I had some spots where they were staying shaded. And so they're just now coming up. But I wanna show, you just have to clean them up a little bit. Hellebores are, or Linton roses are a semi evergreen. So some of their growth stays green, but then come the next year, it starts looking pretty bad and you wanna trim it off. So I always have my trug with me, my big tub. And what we're doing is we're getting into this, what kind of can look like an ugly area right now, but it's one of my favorites here when the growing season. Lots of leaves, 
You see some of that bronzing on the box, so that's gonna come out of it. But up in here is gonna be all of my hellebores. This is one of my favorites. It gets this new growth right here in the center, but you can see all the outer growth from last year is now flopping down. So all we have to do with that is go in with our pruners, our little secateurs here, and start trimming that off. Because what it needs is its new growth, not last year's growth. And so we can prune off anything that's looking haggard and bad and just expose this fresh growth that you can't tell yet, but these get really deep blooms on them. Right there at my finger is a bloom coming. And when they open up, here's one right here. Look at this gorgeous bloom. They are super dark and just so beautiful. And I want you to see, look at that beautiful bloom. That's what I love about hellebore. They can be pretty quick sometimes, depending on the year, but they can be so beautiful. So as you can see, really what you're doing is removing last year's growth that now is looking a little bit haggard after winter and leaving room for all of the fresh new growth to have much more room to grow, all those blooms to have room. Now, it can be best to do this when the buds are really small and just beginning, but again, I'm doing it when I have time. I've done most of my others in other parts of the yard, but these I've been leaving, and I look at them every morning because my spin bike is right behind me through the windows. So every morning I stare at them and think, Today's the day and it hasn't been, but finally I'm getting it done. Now all this discard is perfect along with the leaves for the compost pile. I put all this on the compost pile and it does beautiful. So you can reuse what your garden produces to actually nourish it later on with any of the compost you add. So I wanna show you, I've cleared out the leaves. All these I'm gonna pick up and mulch with the mower and put them on my compost pile. It's such a beautiful thing to do. Now what you can see down here are the hellebores that are exposed and this is why it's so beneficial for them to remove all of last year's growth. You can see now down below, there's lots of new buds that are gonna be pushing through, lots of new leaves that are gonna come out and create, these usually flower first and then push out tons of leaves and create kind of a small shrub type habit. But you can see all these small buds now have much more room to grow out and start opening up. You know, when I was little, we never really had hellebores. You couldn't really find them locally at that time. So whenever I saw them, they seemed so exotic. And they're one of the easiest things to grow. You know, partial sun, some dappled light does really well for me in the summer. Some nice, good, well-draining soil. I add compost to them maybe every year, every other year if I can. And I'll show you here in a couple weeks when they get much more full and much more large and really are in bloom, how good they look. I'm out here in the orchard now. Now I have about 20, 25 trees of apples, pears, plums, peaches, cherries, pears, did I say pears? Um, apricots. And all of those need some dormant oil. So dormant oil and horticultural oil is what I have found organically one of the best defenses to start early on in the season. And that's because it coats the trees in a light oil and it really prevents, you know, the different rust that can happen in the spots. Also lots of worms that can bore into apples and different fruits. And it really is that defense that to me helps all season long. Now, the one thing it doesn't help is Japanese beetles, which I do have an issue, you know, in July with Japanese beetles, usually on some apples, but mostly peaches and anything else that could be ripe a little bit early. But what I'm gonna do is spray the trees. I have a big four gallon sprayer that I have mixed up already, the horticultural oil. You can find Dorant oil and different brands anywhere. I buy concentrate, mix it up, because I use a lot of it. I'll also spray my lilacs at the bottom of the orchard because I have scale issues on these lilacs. And if you can spray them during their dormancy, like over the winter here, late, late winter, early spring, it really helps get rid of it, really. And it's really the only way I have found to truly get rid of scale long-term. And I do this every year preventative and then also if I see any spots. So I did this on my roses because I had scale on those last year too. But um, let's just get started and spray some trees. So once I have it strapped on, have it mixed up, I've already shaken it, made sure it's well mixed together. I can then just pump it with my hand pump. And this just allows me to do multiple things at once without having to refill a lot and go back and forth. So obviously my wand is right here. And I have already used this, like I said, a little bit. So I had it pretty much mixed up. Now the big thing I do is make sure to coat everything. So I do this on a non-windy day. It is organic, it is safe, but obviously you don't just wanna get yourself wet everywhere. 
read the labels, check everything, but I make sure to spray everything very well. And what's nice is when the tree is dormant without any leaves on it, you can see it being sprayed on because it changes from just that dry color to a wet color as it gets sprayed. So I can really watch, keep pumping, and make sure I'm spraying everything from the tips down. Now, these trees are mid-stage. I've had them in about five years, been pruning them out into an open base lateral shape. So I'm still able to reach most of them from the ground with this. If not, obviously you have to get ladders, use something to be able to elevate you. But right now I can broadcast it with a sprayer like this pretty easily. So I'm gonna take you up to the tree. You can see the dry down below. I'll finish spraying that down there. But see how it just coats everything. And I like it to even start dripping off. That makes me feel like I got the tree really good. So you can see it's wet everywhere out to the tips. Everything is covered. That's really gonna help coat everything and just protect it for the upcoming season. So I have quite a few more trees to go. So I'm just gonna get at it. Okay, you can see it actually, that is maybe a little sped up, but really it only took me probably 20, 30 minutes to do these trees. Now they're relatively small still, so it'll take longer and take more as they get larger, but the difference in spraying them with horticultural, horticultural oil versus not has been so massive and so obvious that I don't think I can ever go back. I mean, it's such a great organic way to be preventative about any of those diseases and things that can really bother all these trees every year. So if it's something that you're having issues with, even down to scale, this dormant oil is really works well. It's really quick to mix up. The important thing I think is to make sure you drench the item in it. Make sure it's dripping off so it's coated very well on all those surfaces because that's what's gonna make sure it really does have a better outcome and really does what it needs to do. So I hope you maybe enjoyed some of this. You know, I don't know. I never know for sure what to show with gardening videos and whatnot, but I'm really enjoying bringing you along in my different processes, showing you the beginnings to the ends. And this is just the first, obviously, this year, the very first thing where I'm actually doing or planting or getting ready for anything. So a lot of the fun stuff is gonna come in the months ahead when I have lots of new perennial beds I'm gonna be putting in, lots of blooms I'm gonna be adding and color I'm gonna be adding. So that will be coming too, but you have to start with the not blooming, the dormancy period like we are now in order to get to the fun part. Happy gardening, friends.